Good morning. My name is Captain Larry Smith. I'm a captain on the Louisville Fire Department. I'm assigned down here at the Louisville Training Academy. This morning we will be reviewing Chapter 6 of the IFSTA Manual of Hose Nozzles and Flow Rates. Our first objective would be to distinguish among the different types of nozzles and at the end of the class I will look at some of the nozzles commonly found on your apparatuses and what you will see throughout our department. Uh, solid stream nozzles are produced in a fixed orifice or a smooth board nozzle. Uh, the handline operating ones such as our big, big pipes are operated at a maximum of 50 psi and usually we use these nozzles for reach and penetration. These are formulas uh, that are found in your book. I'm not going to spend any time on them. They are in your book. Uh, be aware of them. They can be used on the test. So this formula is the use of formula to determine the water size flow from any solid stream nozzle. Um, this formula used this formula to determine water flow from any solid stream nozzle also. Okay, fog stream nozzles produce a stream that is broken into finely divine particle. As you can see, as you adjust the fog pattern to a, from a straight stream to a narrow stream to a wide stream, uh, this comes into effect. The impinging jets of the water, the more you uh, widen the fog, uh, the more it's going to, uh, the little teeth, the rubber teeth on here, and the deflection. Okay, so just be aware of that as you operate the stream or select the stream you want to use. There are a variety of fog stream nozzles available with different capabilities. You have your constant flow fog nozzle and your selectable gallons. So in your constant flow, it is designed to flow specific volume on all streams pattern at specific nozzle discharge pressure. So no matter if you're at fog, Wide fog, medium fog, straight fog, uh, it's going to flow the same amount of gallonage. And then you have your selectable gallonage, whereas your nozzle man is able to control how much water you're going to get out of that, that nozzle. The driver operator must know the gallonage setting in which the nozzle will be operated in order to properly calculate friction loss and determine the appropriate pump discharge pressure. So in Major's Dive Ripples class, you should have give, been given a sheet uh, that tells you friction laws and how much uh, the pressures will be out of every nozzle we have. There are a variety of fog string nozzles available with different capabilities. So we're talking about the automated fog nozzle and the high pressure fog nozzle. With the automated fog nozzle, it gives you the ability to change patterns with maintaining the same amount of nozzle pressure. So as you increase the pressure, the orifice or the size at the end of the nozzle will open up wider to compensate for that pressure and give you the same amount of nozzle pressure. The high pressure fog nozzle produces a stream with significant forward velocity, but relatively low volume of water delivery. So we typically don't use this in residential structure firefighting. These type of nozzles are used in wildland fires. Driver operator must ensure that adequate discharge pressure is supplied to all hose lines, especially those equipped with automatic nozzle. Hose lines supplied with inadequate pressure may not provide sufficient flow for fire suppression, even though the stream may appear well formed. So if you're gonna be a apparatus operator or a sergeant, you need to be well versed on how much pressure you're giving um, that person that's on that nozzle, all right? Next, we're gonna talk about the automated fog nozzle. Is this slide in here twice? I think this slide is in here twice. It is. 
Let's go to this learning objective here. Identify considerations for selecting nozzles and is distinguished among the different types of special purpose nozzles. Nozzles for use on hand lines may be solid, fog, or broken stream design. Here is shown a solid stream, a smooth bore. These are fog, these are broken stream. If you go in your cabinets or some of your lockers in your firehouses, you might find uh, we used to carry these cellar pipe nozzles. We had a hundred uh, GPM and a 400 GPM. Master stream nozzles are a common piece of equipment on pumpers. Uh, they're capable of flowing water in excess of 350 gallons per minute. So when we talk about these nozzles, especially in the little fire department, we're talking about our blitz fire and we're talking about our monitors. They may produce solid and or fog stream, okay? Uh, smooth bore streams generally operate at uh, 80 PSI nozzle pressure, and, but if they go to fog, they generally operate at 100 PSI pressure. Master stream appliances have the ability to change stream directions or angle while water is being discharged. So if we're talking about our monitors, we can move that stream, even, even in our blitz fires now, we're able to move that nozzle, okay, with, with it flowing the high pressure, the high gallonage. <clears throat> Master stream appliances can be portable monitors, as we stated, or a combination monitor. Elevated master streams may be permanently attached to aerial devices or designed to be detachable. Uh, now all of our elevated master streams have pre-pipe, so we don't have to do this anymore. And then this here will be a design as we have on Tower 2. Firefighters may need to deploy special nozzle to operate in unusual location or specific fuels. So we have um, cellar pipe nozzle uh, and we have piercing nozzles and we, we really don't use these. Uh, we're going to make a tax. So uh, I don't really need to say much about these. Just be aware of cellar nozzle, chimney nozzle, piercing nozzle. Just be aware of the different types. Uh, it can be pop up on the test. Not saying that it will, but everything is fair game if it's in the book. Uh, our next learning objective is to summarize the facts about nozzle pressure and reaction. So Newton laws tell us for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So counterforce pushes back against firefighter operating the nozzle and then the water is discharged from the nozzle. So every time you open that nozzle, you're gonna have pressure that pushes you back, okay? As you close the nozzle, you might go forward a little bit. Uh, the operator's operator or the sergeant can make that more manageable for you if they know what they're doing, okay? Excessive nozzle reaction may seriously injure firefighters and hamper fire suppression efforts. Like I said, if you're the apparatus operator or the sergeant, um, putting too much pressure on the line can injure that firefighter. And he's probably gonna let you know once he gets outside. Uh, you can make his job a lot, whole lot easier when he's inside a burning building if it has the right pressure on it. Different types of nozzle operate at specific nozzle pressure. We know our final nozzle, we operate at 100 PSI. Our solid stream nozzles uh, is 50 PSI. And our fixed monitors, we operate at 80 PSI. Next slide is going to show you some more formulas. I'm not spending time on them. Uh, look at them, review them. Um, just be aware of them. So I told you guys this is a very short chapter. So in summary, 
The driver operator are not always responsible for selecting the appropriate nozzle for use during fire ground operation. But if you pull up on the scene and you see a fully involved structure and we have um, houses on either side um, that is caught fire, you know, big fire, big water. Think about pulling the blitz. Think about getting your monitor going. Okay, so your captain might not always tell you that, um, but you should know that. You should be thinking that. However, they must be familiar with the capabilities and the limitation of each nozzle carried on the apparatus as well as the specific flow rate and discharge pressure required to ensure safe and effective operations. Driver operators must understand the hydraulic calculations that must be performed in order to the achieve the desired results of the fire ground. Now, I'm going to go over some of the different nozzles that we carry on the fire ground. This particular nozzle, this task force nozzle, is pretty much one all of us have um, on our first line, second line possibly. Um, it has a low pressure and a standard pressure. This nozzle will be flow, flowed at 100 PSI, okay? Um, by the manufacturer recommendation, it's re recommended that we use it at, lo at low pressure. What that does is, even though we're getting 100 PSI here, the mechanism inside reduces it down to 55 PSI and it makes it easier, uh, easier for us to handle inside and for movability, okay? Very nice nozzle. Control it here, on, off, open. With this type of valve, this is called a slide valve and it allows it to still flow the amount of water we need no matter if uh, fully closed or open. That's this nozzle. This, uh, what we talked about in the presentation, is a variable, variable gallonage nozzle. So this particular one is what we all should have, or if you have a new apparatus, on your hotel packs. This particular one goes from 30 to 125 gallons per minute, okay? Whereas this one has the rubber teeth on it, this one has metal teeth, okay? You can go to wide fault, all the way open, or more of a solid stream if you close it that way, okay? You change the gallon niche by sliding it either right or left. You should get out and, and play with these nozzles uh, on your apparatus and be familiar with it. Not only can you shut this nozzle off here with this handle, you can also shut it off by turning it all the way right. It has a thing here that goes to off before it goes to 30 gallons per minute. This nozzle also will break down where you can extend the hose. So take this off, extend the hose, maybe you need uh, a smooth bore tip at the end of this line. So you can shut the nozzle off without shutting it off at the discharge gate and extend the hose and put another nozzle on it. When you do that, you have this slide where you can protect the threads or leave them exposed. So if you're gonna put it on, the threads will be protected or you can use this small orifice uh, as a smooth board. Um, and protect the, protect the threads that way, all right? Very versatile nozzle that we have. These should be on your hotel packs, all right? Our blitz fire, we know that this flows 500 gallons per minute. It also has uh, a low pressure setting and a standard pressure setting, and it's very operable and can be moved. Um, where it used to be when we had our old five packed, uh, they weren't very movable. But with our blitz fire now, we're able to move up, down, right, and left. We can 
go to a more wider fog or a more of a straight stream. Um, they got the legs, and some of them uh, have them where you can tether them into a, a tree or something pretty stable and leave it. This can be left alone. We can set it in place and leave it. Uh, handle operates by pulling this out. Okay, and it also has a safety mechanism where I do an automatic shut off, okay? So that's our blitz fire nozzle. Our, our smooth bore tips uh, that we can put on our monitor, uh, either mounted or we can take them off and they can be portable. So we have four tip sizes on here. You should be familiar with how much water flows when you have the different tips on it. Engine three eighths, inch and a half, inch and three quarters, and two inch. Five, six, eight, and a thousand ga gallons per minute, okay? Then we have here our big pipe, okay? Big pipe, three inch hose. My captain always tell me, if you're grabbing a bitch, big pipe, then take these two, these two tips off because if we're getting big water, why do I need to reduce the amount of water that I'm getting, okay? If I need a big pipe, I need big water. So I'm gonna take these two tips off, put them in my pocket, and now I have the maximum amount of water that this nozzle will give me, okay? So just be aware of the different type of nozzles you have on the streets. We have less of them now. Uh, because we have, they're more effective and more efficient. They're lighter weight. And um, so be aware of what's, what's on your apparatus when you go into a house. If you get in overtime or if you're detailed to another house, be aware of the apparat, uh, the nozzles that's on that particular pumper or what's in that particular district. If you have any questions, you can shoot me an email or call me down here the Fire Academy, and I will try to answer those questions for you. Um, that's the class. That's Chapter 6. Thank you.